your bite-sized daily roundup of the biggest news from the world of film. This is The Daily Reel with Van Connor. Good morning, it's Friday the 18th of June. Birthday to the iconic Isabella Rossellini, Kimmy Schmidt and Scrooge's Carol Kane, Game of Thrones and Eternal star Richard Madden, and Gone Girl alum Kim Dickens. 17 years ago today saw the release of The Terminal and the seminal comedy Dodgeball, a true underdog story, while Toy Story 3 came out and broke hearts 11 years ago in 2010, and today in 2021, it's the day all of this is happening. The upcoming 78th Venice International Film Festival have confirmed the month-long rumours that Denis Villeneuve's Dune will have its world premiere at this year's event. The film will follow Paul Atreides, the son of a duke who's gifted control of the planet Arrakis by a galactic emperor who sees his family as a threat. Forced to unite Arrakis' nomadic tribes to protect the world's vital resource, the so-called Spice Melange, Paul must defend from an attack by both the emperor and House Atreides' longtime rivals, House Harkonnen. Canadian director Denis Villeneuve, the man behind such cinematic darlings as Sicario, Arrival, and Blade Runner 2049, adapts Dune from the novel by Frank Herbert, with a script he penned alongside John Spates and Eric Roth. In the vein of Warner Brothers' hugely successful IT series, Dune's intended to be the first of two features comprising the iconic Herbert text, and sports a cast list that includes Timothy Chalamet as Paul, opposite Zendaya, Rebecca Ferguson, Oscar Isaac, Josh Brolin, Stellan Skarsgård, Dave Bautista, David Desmulchen, Charlotte Rambling, Jason Momoa, and Javier Bardem. Whew. Dune will blast onto Venice's Sala Grand on the 3rd of September. Some thoughts have a certain sound that being the equivalent to a form. Through sound and motion, you will be able to paralyze nerves, shatter bones, set fires, suffocate an enemy or burst his organs. We will kill until no Harkonnen breathes Arakeen air. Why? Hiroyuki Sonata, star of Westworld and will square off against Keanu Reeves in John Wick 4. The actor, who recently portrayed the hell-spawned ninja of vengeance Scorpion in the aforementioned Mortal Kombat, joins a call sheet of newcomers that also includes fellow martial artist Donnie Yen, as well as British-Japanese pop star Rina Sawayama and Winona Earp's Shamia Anderson. Nothing's currently known of Sonata's role, but it's fair to assume he'll be in for a scrap. In a statement, director Chad Stahelski said, Having long admired Hiroyuki as both an actor and action performer, I'm thrilled and honoured to welcome him to the John Wick family. John Wick 4 is presently aiming for release on the 27th of May next year. Get over here! Former Disney Channel star and singer Selena Gomez's in-production horror thriller Dollhouse has found a director. Gomez will produce and lead the feature, which is now set to be helmed by Western horror The Winds, Emma Tammy. Little is known of Dollhouse's plot, save for the fact that it'll use the world of the upper echelons of New York City's fashion scene as its setting. Gomez's last on-camera role was as Chan in accused pedophile Woody Allen's 2019 rom-com A Rainy Day in New York. While she can next be heard returning as the voice of vampire girl Mavis in Hotel Transylvania 4, Transformania, due out on the 23rd of July. No production schedule for Dollhouse has been announced. My parents kept warning her about you. Warning? Why the hell would they be warning her? Because on a first date, you took her walking in the rain and she got bronchial pneumonia. For Christ's sake, I'm never going to get over this. And finally, because we live in a dystopia, as of today, mega corporation Amazon will begin plastering its shipping boxes with advertisements for its forthcoming Chris Pratt film, The Tomorrow War. The company paid out an eye-watering $200 million for the rights to the film, which was originally planned to be distributed by Paramount before the pandemic hit. As such, they're eager to make back their investment on the Chris Mackay-directed flick and have decided to quite literally think outside the box. The campaign will be trialled across the United States, Canada, Brazil and Australia, with the option to potentially move over to Europe in the coming weeks. Yvonne Strahovski and J.K. Simmons star alongside Pratt, who plays a soldier drafted from the present day to the year 2052, to help fight off an alien invasion. In the year 2021, meanwhile, The Tomorrow War will be released on Amazon Prime Video on July the 2nd. It can't be! No! We'll never defeat the corporation! They've won! There is one way, Adzin. You can shoot yourself. If it's the only way, I must.
In UK cinema from today, you can find Paul W.S. Anderson's Monster Hunter alongside Treasure City, Phil Liggett, the voice of Cycling, It Must Be Heaven, The Reason I Jump, Ben Wheatley's latest, In the Earth, and the Lin-Manuel Miranda-powered In the Heights, as well as Disney Pixar's Luca, which is also available for general streaming on Disney+. Plus. Elsewhere on streaming today are The Dead Don't Die, the Dennis Quaid psycho thriller The Intruder, Yagani Tandiram, and Kevin Hart's Fatherhood on Netflix, movies dropping Clarissa Navas's one in a thousand for their cinephile subscribers, and Amazon Prime is getting Godzilla King of the Monsters. On Freeview tonight are Spotlight on BBC Two, Braveheart on Five, The Leisure Seeker on Five Select, and United, Enemy of the State, and In the Line of Fire on great movies. You can catch the 2013 remake of Carrie and 28 Days Later on Five Star, Taken Two on ITV, Bridesmaids on ITV Two, Under Siege on ITV Four, and Mamma Mia on ITVB, Film Four showing Jumper, The Bone Collector, and Action Three called Triple X, The Return of Xander Cage, and the Horror Channel's got Haunt and the Soska Sisters remake of Rabid. While the Sky Cinema are now premiere to cap off your week is the Kate Blanchett dramedy Where'd You Go, Bernadette? And that's the Daily Reel for Friday, June the 18th and another week. We've got our Weekly Reel Omnibus Edition out on Saturday if you've missed anything and want to catch up. Don't forget to leave us a rating or review wherever you're listening to the show. Meanwhile, have a great weekend, stay safe, keep it cinematic, and we'll see you on Monday. The Daily Reel is a Candy Saw production presented by Van Connor and written by Calvin Prickett. All information is correct at the time of writing and source links are in the description for each episode. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe on all good podcast platforms or ask Alexa to install the Daily Reel skill for your morning flash briefing. Follow the show on social at Daily Reel Pod and we'll be back every weekday. Until then, keep it cinematic. Cinematic.